It turned out to be an hour and a half, over an hour and a half of filming. So I will be cutting it in half. Oh, and stay tuned for unboxings throughout this month. Um, probably starting next week. Ursula Yuen, why do you like black so much? Good question. Um, I think it's part of my aesthetic. I've always liked red, but at the same time, red and black are sort of the juxtapose great match and so i've always liked very saturated colors i've always liked more vibrant colors even if i were to go with colors that doesn't mean that i don't like pastels but i just gravitate towards the saturation and also if you look at my my complexion and just my hair for example i have very dark natural hair this is my natural hair undyed um, I have very dark hair and I have a fair complexion so anytime I wear a black bag even if I have something more colorful on it always works it's just something that just naturally goes well with my complexion and whenever I wear like a monochromatic outfit like either black and white or just all black I look so cool in it and it's just part of my aesthetic that is why I like black so much on top of that black is just a practical color and because I live in Canada it snows it rains it's like all kinds of crazy weather um, most of the year except the summertime black is just the easiest color to take care of next question by Tiffany two one two three what is your daily routine I wake up I make my coffee I have my coffee while I start looking at work emails and I do work and I um, don't eat breakfast usually. I fast until I'm hungry. I usually don't get hungry until, I don't know, 2 or 3 p.m. When I'm hungry, I would go and make something to eat and depending on what I crave that day, it could either be carbs or more protein. So depending on what I crave, I'll make something accordingly and then I'll keep on working until I am done working and then I'll just make dinner or we might be going out for dinner usually after dinner is my winding down time so I usually do stuff for myself so it could be a multitude of things it could be me working on my channel content it could be me just like <laughs> playing dress up with my bags it could be me decluttering it could be me trying to clean up my room and things like that and then when I get tired um, the way I wind down is that I will just uh, sit on the couch and watch some shows or TV with my husband and usually we have a snack um, when we do that. That's usually my other eating time because I do intermittent fasting but like I always eat real food when it's time to eat a real meal. Like my real meal usually is my dinner time so uh, dinner I eat a lot and I eat real good food and for my snack I will just snack like I'll have chips or chocolates or both or ice cream uh, sometimes I'll have all of it with fruits and stuff like that so it's not the healthiest but it's a way that I have found worked with my body and when I get really really tired usually it's past midnight then I go to bed oh and before that I usually take my shower then I go to bed next question ping you 48 which bag do you like more the mini Lindy or the mini della cavalleria hands down it would have to be the mini Lindy so this is my mini Lindy I love this bag so much and like I mentioned earlier, bags that are made of Clémence, Torillon Clémence, are some of my favorite everyday, very practical, good, hard-wearing bags. So the Mini Lindy and my Picotin are both uh, some of my most hard-wearing, I don't worry about them type of handbags. And between the Mini Lindy and the Della Cavalleria, I just I just love the Mini Lindy so much. It's so cute, it's so flexible, it fits a ton, and it's just it's just gorgeous. So yeah, Mini Lindy definitely my favorite. My favorite even beyond the two that you asked. Alex B, if you would start your journey at Hermes, what would you get first? What would I get first in terms of like pre-spending items or bags? I guess with bags, just, you know, have a wish list and whichever bag your essay is able to get for you, especially non-quota, start with that. Um, I would say 
for me, easily, easily these two would be on top of my list for non-quota bags. And then quota bags is just whatever you want. In terms of like buying their other stuff, right? I really, truly enjoy uh, some of their ready to wear. There's always some exceptional pieces that are just great, well-priced and just cute as well. So ready to wear is one of them. I love their fine jewelries. I think if you don't have a lot of fine jewelry or if you just like a lot of fine jewelry, I think there's so much to explore and they can get expensive, but you know, there's a price range that varies. So you can just pick whatever you're comfortable buying at that time, especially when you're starting out, you're probably a little bit more conservative, but as you get into your journey more and more, you're going to buy more and more expensive things anyway. That's just like the natural process. Um, other than that, silks. I'm wearing a silk scarf right now. Their silks, especially the 90 centimeter silk, is my favorite, absolute favorite. They have different patterns. They always have new ones coming out as well. And so I would say silks are just um, my absolute favorite. So yeah, silks, uh, fine jewelry, ready to wear. Those are my absolute favorite things to buy. And then shoes, if they work for you. Like I mentioned earlier, not all shoes will work. And so when I do find a pair of shoe that I like and that I know is comfortable, I tend to buy multiples of, which is what I've done. <laughs> Lizzie C, is there any Dior handbag unboxings in the new future or not near future? At the moment, no. I'm really happy with my Lady Dior. The Lady Dior that I got myself on my birthday um, a few years ago. I can't believe it's been, it's been what? three years already I think pretty sure I got this in 2020 um, which is the only day Lady Dior that I had planned at the time in my head I had planned that I would only get one and it would be this one the mini size and it's so beautiful and classic it's not a bag that I wear all the time but it's definitely a bag that I love looking at and I'm glad I have it in my collection I'm glad that I got it back then when it's not so crazy expensive yet it was already kind of expensive but now it's just crazy expensive and so um, I would say this is probably the only one bag that I will get from Dior unless they have s new things in the future that I like but at the moment I am just too invested in Hermes I still love Chanel, so I would rather get Chanel between Chanel and Dior. I would have to choose Chanel. At the end of the day, even though Chanel sometimes is not as perfected in terms of their craftsmanship, um, their styles of bags are just more versatile in terms of the styling portion. Like their styles are just more, it can be anything. It can be more casual, it can be more dressy. It can be worn every day for some reason as well, we, even though they may not have the best craftsmanship anymore and the best quality anymore. Their style is just so much more versatile than Dior bags in general. That's my personal opinion. Obviously, you don't have to agree with it, but um, I don't foresee any future handbags from Dior, at least not at the moment, because um, I'm just completely happy with just this one. T Cabez 129. If there was no Hermes journey, would you buy the clothes or jewelry? That is a great question because, like I mentioned earlier, if I had to like, you know, start my journey, what would I buy? Yes, I would buy fine jewelry, clothes, silk scarves. But if I didn't have to do a journey, then I would still buy them. But I think with a lot less frequency. Because obviously I am chasing after their quota bags. I know the competition here. And so you want to be a bit strategic with being able to get your quota bags at the end of the year or, you know, when it's your anniversary, you want to be able to get those bags and you don't want to penalize yourself by not playing the game properly. You either play it or you don't play it, right? So uh, if I didn't have to play it and still be able to get quota bags, then I would buy a lot less frequently. But because it is a competitive nature and, you know, it is very competitive here. So I, I got to do what I have to do. Miles and Sid, where do you sell your bags? Any recommendations? So in the past, I've done vlog sales. So I just sell it myself privately through my Instagram or through my YouTube. But lately, I haven't sold anything publicly anymore. In fact, I kind of favor using consignments because it takes the stress out of me having to deal with P 
people that are not nice and uh, also just like the the whole logistics part. So the two main consignments that I have used are Fashion File and Lux Du Jour. Lux Du Jour is uh, also Canadian, so you can just send it within the country. With Fashion File, I usually have to take it uh, across the border and then send it from there. I just prefer doing that just because it's already within the country. Whenever you use a consignment, um, they take a big, big cut off of your selling price. So you have to be willing to, um, you have to be willing to pay the costs associated with selling your bags. Uh, other than that, you have to do it yourself, which again is a lot of work, a lot of stress. Days Gracia, would you accept a Birkin or Kelly touch if offered in the specs that you like? Absolutely. I think for the regular size Birkins and Kellys, so we're not talking the mini Kellys obviously, uh, but for a regular size Birkin Kelly, I would absolutely take it in the touch if it's in the specs that I like. On the other hand, I wouldn't take it if it was a full exotic bag because I think that's a bit too much but in the touch I think it's so beautiful and very very tasteful uh, on a mini Kelly is a different story because mini Kelly's are just so small and I would love mini Kelly's in a rainbow of colors and a rainbow of different leather types in fact candy mom are the Hermes loafers comfortable we answered that earlier Alexandra Cheerman Bags you don't use but still love, sell or keep in case you might miss them in the future? Good question. I've had to deal with that constant battle of um, deciding whether some things are worth keeping or should I be more cutthroat with my own things and just let them go and just sell it and forget it. I don't think there is a perfect answer to either scenarios. A lot of it has to play with your emotions and how attached you are with your things. So it is probably not my place to tell you what to do. In my own experience, I've kind of done a bit of both. Sometimes I have been more cutthroat and just kind of bam, 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 just just decide to let things go, especially when I got overwhelmed. When at other times I was more logical, I was more like analyzing how long I haven't worn the bag or how often I haven't worn the bag and things like that, then I would let it go in that instance. So um, does that mean that I don't miss those bags? Absolutely not. I still miss pro pretty much 99% of the things that I sold, I still miss, but it doesn't mean that I can't live without them so it boils down to what you are feeling at that moment i would say for me these days because my collection is so tight and everything is you know like every bag that i own they're very very classic uh coveted pieces it's so much harder to just be cutthroat because everything that you cut is just crazy like i wouldn't I wouldn't be able to sell any of these that's just crazy right like these are just such classic pieces and um you know what you see where i'm going like whereas before when my collection was more of the lv bags or the trendy bags uh and a mix of everything it was a lot easier to be more cutthroat and just be like okay i'm gonna like just really downsize and just be keeping the core of what i know is tried and true so i would say these days i i would be more logical and just be keeping it just to be on the safe side and maybe and only maybe one day in very far future i will sell like the occasional bag fashion fly live free most comfortable loafers answered it earlier it's the royal loafer and the paris loafer but get the one with the plain leather not the one with the trim um margaret ms hope you don't mind asking but wondering if you have children we answered that also earlier overjoyed it took or gold pick one only this one is a hard one because you're asking me to pick between these two super super neutral coveted colors like these two colors you honestly cannot go wrong with either one so you could easily have been offered either one or pick either one and you would totally be happy with now having said that i still feel like it depends on how well it blends with your skin tone um i personally feel and i didn't know that before but i personally feel that a tube looks quite nice on my skin tone 
I used to think that it doesn't, but I think it depends on what it is. So it also depends on the bag. I feel like if this bag was in a tube, actually it would still look very nice. If this bag was in gold, I think I would like it less. So it depends on the bag, whereas this bag, if it was a tube, I think it would still look very nice. Um, and of course it looks very nice in gold. And uh, it's very hard. Like, for example, on a Birkin, I think a Birkin would look great in both. But on a Kelly, I think the Kelly in gold looks nicer. There's something about the style that uh, dictates which color looks better. On a Mini Kelly, I would say they're both nice, but it probably the gold will pop more. But on the Mini Lindy, for some reason, I just love it in a tube. You know, this was actually my first choice in terms of color um, color choice for this bag, and it it just is so it's just so beautiful and universal. Also, the other thing I wanted to mention is that depending on the hardware, I think that makes a di big difference. With this bag especially, I think if it was silver hardware, even though they're pretty small hardware, I don't know if it'll look as cute as the gold hardware, which is strange. But with this one, with the silver hardware, it looks better because it's already a casual style. So if it was gold, it would look a little weird, if that makes sense. So I feel like you can't go wrong, but if I could only pick one, I think, Oh, I can't. I can't. It depends on the bag. Which bag are you looking at getting? Actually, wait. I think you were looking at... You were looking... Joe, I think you were looking at getting the Constance, right? So for the Constance 18, which is also on my wish list, I would prefer it in a tube. So yeah, I would go with a tube if I were you. <laughs> yeah, that would be my pick. Uh, the Constance 18, I would go with a tube and silver or a tube and gold hardware. Actually, all three hardware, even rose gold, would look very nice in a tube. I think that's, I think that's my pick. <laughs> Especially the Constance. I feel like the Constance is a little bit more serious, whereas this bag is a little bit more casual. So any any fun colors would look pretty good. But neutral is also really good, if that makes sense. There's a reason why black, gold. A tube, etin, those four main neutral dark colors are so universal and loved by the general public that Hermes does these four colors all the time because they're so universal and easy to, they're very easy to dress with any sort of skin tone, any, uh, anybody can pull it off. So I feel like that's probably why you can't go wrong with either. Which one do you guys prefer? Do you guys prefer a tube or gold? And by the way, um, you also have to realize that when it's a different uh, leather, so this one is Epsom, this one is Clémence. Um, even though they're the exact same color code, they do look slightly different, right? I feel like with Clémence, it's slightly cooler tone, if that makes sense. This one is slightly cooler tone. This one is slightly warmer tone. It's very subtle, especially if you don't have one to compare to. It's You can't tell. And if you're just looking at this, you can't tell. But like side by side, you can tell. So there is also the slight difference of the, the leather type and also the bag, the, the bag itself, and the hardware that it comes with. It makes a big difference. Hey, Ling Kong, can you make a top from a 70 centimeter scarf? I don't own the 70 centimeter because I only own the 90 and I also own the bigger shawl, the 140. Um, so my short answer is that probably not as easy to make a top out of a 70 centimeter scarf. I don't want to say that it's impossible because it depends on how big of a person you are, right? Like if you are a lot, well, if you're, if you're a very tiny teenager, I guess, because I'm an adult, but I, I kind of have a teenager's body, um, then you can, you can do it with a 70. But let's just take a look at how much smaller a 70 scarf is. I measured it twice already. So this scarf, even though it is a 90 centimeter scarf, is really only 
89 centimeters so it's only 89 centimeters across so with a 70 centimeter you don't even get the full 70 chances are it will chances are you'll get like 69 or 69.5 so let's just take 20 centimeters away from this scarf so you're looking at a scarf that is this big like from where my finger is here to here and so it's a lot less so it's a lot harder to do a top with this little fabric unless you're super tiny and like I said maybe if you're a very young tiny teenager then you can possibly do it but usually you need a little bit of that fabric to tie it right so like for me for instance I had to tie it right here for the neck portion and also at the back to tie it together uh, and and wherever you tie your top and you want to be able to tuck it in and stuff like that so unless you're super young and super tiny then maybe 70 centimeter would be okay but I guess um, probably not for most people and um, I honestly think that 90 centimeter is a good size they also have scars in a hundred centimeters um, I think it's a different fabric or maybe they do have it in silk I can't remember it just depends on your body size so I don't want to say no it's not possible but it's probably a lot harder Tichihara ranking of non quota bags oh good question my most favorite one is the mini Lindy followed by uh, Picotin 18 which is this one I would love a Bolide mini size so that would be my third one I don't have a mini Evelyn but I hear mixed reviews about it so I would rank it pretty low as well even though it's quite reasonably priced so it doesn't hurt to try it if I get a chance to try it in the future um, I don't like the Gipsier her bag I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it because I kind of love the vibe but I don't know how easy it is to get in and out I heard that it's very hard so I kind of don't like it for that reason so it's pretty low also on the ranking um, what other bags don't I have there's a new a loop bag that is similar to the Picotin it's kind of like a bucket style that one's kind of cute I would probably like that one quite a bit as well because it's similar to this um there's a in the loop bag which is more of a belt bag that one looks cute i don't have it um but that one's kind of cute trendy i know i own the della cavalleria now that i've owned it for a while not that it's there's nothing wrong with it but i do find it a little too chunky and masculine for my style because i'm a little bit more feminine and dressy so i would rank it a lot lower I think that is it because otherwise I also own the constant slim which is more of a small leather good so I wouldn't consider that to be a bag Tichi Hara have you gotten black dots on the edge of your Epsom leather bags oh so that's interesting because I heard that somewhere and um, I don't remember where I heard it from and I was just like thinking oh that's interesting but the only bags that are an Epsom that I have that are not black already so you wouldn't even see the difference is this SLG and then this bag right here which is gold and etoupe and I I'm just looking at it kind of examining it without being super crazy picky um, it looks totally fine to me so no problems with the etoupe color looking very closely and I have 2020 vision by the way guys I can see very detail oriented if something is wrong um, honestly nothing I don't see anything crazy on this bag or black dots that you're referring to which I have heard in someone else's video and I was quite surprised to hear that not that it's not possible because again these are made of leather and leather is skin right it's skin from an animal and therefore if there are any imperfections it's not so unusual because you know it's like your own skin you have own your own freckles too so but I would but I would assume that with these colors which are the darker neutrals they would be less apparent as well so I'm looking even through the strap and everything I have used these bags too right 
I don't see anything whatsoever to complain about. And also, I trust that with Hermes artisans, they would know to cut around it, right? Like if they were to see any black dots, maybe they'll put it on the underside of a bag or maybe at the edge of a bag so that you don't see it or as minimal as possible. And if you do happen to see one on your bag, maybe it is just that particular animal had more freckles. I don't know. Like I'm just thinking out loud. Um, that it, it's it's not uncommon to find imperfections even with Hermes like I mentioned in my previous video do watch my previous video where I compare Chanel with Hermes and the issues that I've had with both but you know I don't think it's uncommon to found to find imperfections but at the same time we should also be reasonable with what it is considered an imperfection and what is considered a natural process. Okay, the next question seems like a pretty long one by Sisan Loves. Do your love bracelet have a clicking sound when you touch it? Hard to explain. The original love bracelet can't open without a screwdriver, even if you try to pull it off. Is the slim the same? It feels like it can fall apart if you pull it apart. The screw is so tiny. Okay, so um, do watch my review. I have like a super thorough, super thorough review of the Love Bracelet Slim version and I will link it up here. But honestly, this bracelet, no complaints. If anything, I hear that the Slim version is even more carefree and more durable than the original because the original, you have screws on both sides and if they get loose, which apparently you have to check quite frequently, it will just come off and you can lose your bracelet. Whereas I've never had this issue with this bracelet. And even if the screw were to get loose, which never, ever, 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 ever happened, it's a tiny screw, yes. But trust me, this very tiny screw is a little mighty screw because it never came apart ever, 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 ever whatsoever. And I don't ever open it, but I'm just going to open it for you just because um you asked so you just do a quarter turn it doesn't turn more than that so the screw on the slim version doesn't come off at all it just stays on the bracelet so it will never come off of your bracelet it'll never unscrew itself either because you can only do a quarter turn anyway and because it is a hinge version so even if you, it were to so even if even if, which never happens, but even if it were to loosen up the screw for a portion, let's say you forget to, to uh, screw it back on, even if that happens, it will never really fall off. You will notice it because it will, it will do this and then you'll be like, oh, what's going on? And it, it's kind of hard for it to fall off your wrist, I think, unless it's exactly like right here. In fact, I would probably only encourage you to buy this version if I could um, because I've only heard horror stories about the classic version whereas I've only heard great great stories about the thin version which I know according to my essay um, they've fixed the screw issue on the thin version which I totally agree. Margaret MS my LV Pochette Mitsis inside compartment has a very stinky smell. Do you have the same issue? Not at all, but I don't have my Pochette Mitsis anymore because um, that, yeah, I bought, I bought it 10 years ago. I bought it in 2013. I remember very clearly because it was the year that I got married and then I treated myself to a bag and I've had the bag for a long time. It never had any issues but then I also got the most early version of that bag so it's had many many iteration and I have to say that I have noticed that some LV bags especially I've had one instance where I bought an LV bag and it was stinky it was it had a very chemical smell and it was the oddest most like off-putting thing ever and I think it just it's just the draw of your luck. Maybe it came from a factory that used that particular glue or compound, whatever it is, or maybe they didn't air it out properly before shipping it out. And I hear that it's not a problem after a while, but it's just off-putting, right? It's like you just don't want to be paying thousands of dollars and have a bag that smells off-putting. So I understand where you're coming from, but I haven't had that issue. And in fact, every time I've had an like if I did look up at a bag and it smelled kind of funny, I wouldn't buy it. 
which is what happened to that one instance. Um, it was the on the go. I'll link it up here. I bought the on the go and I was just so underwhelmed by it that I had to return it. Okay, so the last one, which I just checked last minute if there was anything new by XO Joanne XO. She says, no questions, but love your videos and love your outfit, especially the H cardigans. Thank you so much, babe. Yes, I love my ready to wear. And um, no, obviously it doesn't always have to be ready to wear for me to love it. I just love clothes in general. And whenever I find a good piece, I just, I'm head over heels. I just love, I just love things that I can wear and rewear, and especially be um, a versatile piece. I love things that can be used in multiple ways, that can be worn multiple times. So I love that. And yes, I had to put my hair up. This is the end of my <laughs> Q and A, and I just double checked the last few questions that came in. And yeah. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe because, like I said. I will be doing um, a month-long unboxing, I guess, starting from next week or whenever I decide to film since it's been so hot. I'm just not motivated, but I will be sharing. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for some birthday unboxings. Hopefully I hear even better news from my essay. I'm still waiting for my quarter bag, like I said. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys in the next video or in the comment section. Bye!